presenters, all in. Um, and then we have a great And tonight we're going to be here at the you want to see it fast, and then it's great. We don't have a seat, we have a seat, and then we're going to be here. All right, next speaker. KPIs has to do with uh, getting five-star reviews. So that's 
one thing that we really strive for is those five star reviews so we can maintain that super low status, which not only helps with the algorithms on these websites, but it also helps with um, providing credibility to the next renter. Right? Uh, they're looking at your reviews, they're looking at what the comments were, they're looking at whether or not it's worth it picking that property. Right? So that's number one. And um, with that being said, that's why we, we push our employees to, you know, really, we really, really emphasize that that experience has to be the absolute best for our guests. Um, one of the other, so some of the other uh, services we provide here, so there's uh, cleanings. So cleanings is probably one of the top most important things. Uh, when people are coming into, uh, when they're renting, they're paying a lot of money to stay at your place. Cleaning is probably the first thing that they look for, that everything's clean, non-used, everything's brand new, what seems brand new, and all these things. So that's something that we also really, really emphasize. And in order to do that, you need a really, really good crew. And I think that's where also we, we're very on top of things because what we do is we're not, we don't only make sure that it's clean for the guests coming in, but we make sure it's clean immediately after it's the guest leaves. So I know that that, that mentality isn't shared across all property management companies. They like to wait and you know, sit a little bit, but, but what, we, what we do is we make sure that right after the guest checks out, somebody's there making sure everything's clean, trash is taken out, uh, everything's wiped down. But then not only that, if there's a long time between guests, we also make sure that our manager is there doing doing uh, what we call their pasos here in Costa Rica, which is just uh, making sure that everything's wiped down, uh, floors are, are cleaned, and just before the guest comes in. So that's another really big aspect of the guest experience is that first impression that everything looks spotless. And uh, along with little details like uh, they do decorations and things like that, our, our crew is really really good at preparing things like that. So it's. That's, a, that's another, another service that we, that we provide. Um, I think we, uh, yeah, with that I mentioned uh, inspections. So inspections is something we actually include within our service. So there are, like here in Costa Rica, you do have your seasonality. So obviously your property might not rent for certain periods of time, not, not long periods, but certain periods. Um, but within those periods, because of the, uh, because of the climate here, um, the moisture and everything like that, you need somebody to go in there and make sure that everything is aired out properly. So if your sheets are sitting there for too long and nothing, so there's no ventilation, or like that, you're going to get things like mold problems and things like that. So we make sure that we provide that service that whether it's being rented or not, somebody's there always checking in, always making sure that things are clean and tidy and smelling nice as well. So that's um, another very good yeah, um, Another uh, service that we provide is inventory. So by that I mean, every, after every single guest, you need to have a complete inventory done of your of your property. So all of the all of the expensive things, you know, things like uh, small things like cutlery and uh, uh, plates and things like that, they break and, and whatnot. But when it comes to the big things, you're always going to make sure you have an inventory because on every state, we always make sure that there's a coverage available. Um, when it's across the platforms, the platforms themselves do provide coverage. Um, and if you're, if you're on top of it and you report it before the next guest comes in, then almost always you get reimbursed. So it's, those are, that's a very, very important part as well as not only things missing, but things that are broken. Um, those are things that you need to make sure that somebody's there checking that every single time without fail. And uh, also right after the checkout. So that's, those are things that we're always on top of. Um, that being said, if something, something happens, during the stay, uh, or even just naturally within the property, a lot of maintenance things happen. So things like uh, things like leaks, um, let's say light bulbs, uh, electrical issues, and things like that. All of that happens to the properties at, at any point, and can happen at any time. So we also do make sure that our maintenance crew is always available. So usually next day service. A lot of times the same day, but we almost always provide next day service um, for whatever's wrong. Um, and that's without fail. Is your maintenance in-house? So our maintenance is in-house. We have, we have our, our maintenance guys that are specialists that have their own specialties. So that's, uh, that's basically what, the way we work. Yeah. Um, so another very, very important part when you want to, when you're buying an investment property is you want it to you want it to rent, right? You want it to rent as much as possible, get the most out of, out of the property. So 
a very, very important aspect to that is marketing. Um, what we do is, not only do we have them on the big platforms where they drive traffic, and actually what's more important in those aspects is the uh, whole algorithm with the platforms, like I said, so it's constantly changing the pictures, it's updating the profiles, there's, there's a lot to it, right, and maintaining those five stars. But along with that, we also provide social media marketing. So we have a marketing crew that will market your property specifically for different periods. So it would be, uh, let's say, uh, I know for the low season, a very, a very popular uh, way to rent your property is to find a longer term to cover the, 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 low, the low time, the low period. So um, what we'll do is we'll be posting on Facebook, uh, posting Twitter, we're doing a, a, a Twitter, TikTok, Instagram, things like that, Reels. Those are all very, very big now. So constantly doing that social media and promoting is very, very important. And um, that's what we do. That's what we provide. Um, along with that, there are there is bill management. So here in Costa Rica, almost depending on whether if you're buying a condo, you're always going to have an HOA or condo fee. Um, you always have electricity. You always have water. So uh, oh, and internet. So those bills, we make sure that we handle them on your behalf. Right. So it's very very easy here in Costa Rica because all you need, everything, almost everything has a contract number, and with that contract number, basically anybody can pay it. So it's not like the electricity needs to be in our name. It can be in your name, and we would just make sure that that is paid every single month. So that's, those are things that we make sure we're on top of. The other things that we help pay are things like property tax. Um, if you have a corporation, we pay the corporation tax. So those are things that uh, we, we make sure we manage and all of that's included within our monthly fee, which I'll, I'll, I'll get to that. Okay. So, um, yeah, but that being said, um, when it comes to taxes, um, in Costa Rica there are two taxes when it comes to renting your property. Um, so there's uh, the, the sales tax and then there's an income rental tax. We make sure that those are paid for every reservation. Um, we do handle that for our customers across the board. If there was any, ever any reason that you were to say, oh, I need uh, this receipt for this, this uh, guest that came, came to stay at our property, we actually are able to provide you that information and, uh, and to prove that it was paid for uh, and submitted to the government. So those are things that we handle as a company. Um, so uh, yeah, that's, uh, that being said, uh, this part needs to be a little bit updated, the financial flexibility, but we do have financial flexibility before we were able to actually even, even receive Canadian e-transfers, but yeah, things have changed. So, but uh, things such as PayPal, uh, Wise Transfer, International Wire Transfer, Cash, those are, those are some forms that our clients choose to use to either receive payments or, or uh, send payments. Um, I think yeah, but I think that basically sums it up on, on, on what we provide. But I know that every situation is very different and has their own needs and every client has their own needs. So a lot of times when we do, when we do an onboarding, we have a video chat with, with whoever the owner is. And um, we like to answer specific questions. So a lot of people have very, very specific questions to their situation and whatnot. So I was, uh, I was actually wondering if, if anybody here has any Specific uh, questions that have to do with the property. Yep. Um, you mentioned about long term. Yep. Um, and especially for off season, and, and I, I'm interested in that. However, what I've been told is that you must be careful because if anybody stays in your unit more than 30 days and they know the rules of Costa Rica, they technically could stay there for up to three years and there's nothing I can do. Is that true? So, hey Louise, sorry, just can you repeat the questions? So oh. that Okay, yep, yep. So uh, the question was, um, are you, is it safe to do a long term? Um, basically, by saying that, I mean, are, do they have the rights to stay in your property for longer than actually agreed? Right? Yeah. I, um, so there has been that situation. Um, there is laws surrounding that, um, that uh, it, it would be three years, right? Um, but there are ways to mitigate that or change that. So the new, there's a new, basically, law that we've been made aware of about how to word your, your contract to, as to not say, let's say, long-term rental agreements, but it would be based around commercial, commercial lease. I, I, I can't remember the words correctly exactly, but uh, there, need, there needs to be the words non-traditional agreements 
as well as uh, commercial lease. Uh, there's one more word there. I can't, I can't remember. Is that a legal thing then? But that's a legal thing. Yeah. Okay. So that's that's the way. Oh, good. We have the right people. That. Yeah. So <laughs> that's the approach that we're taking now to doing longer term, but also it has to be less than a year in those cases. So you need to specify. Obviously, you can ex you can extend if you need to, right? But we always do. Like I said, almost always we do uh, our long terms like maybe five months, six yeah. months, things like that. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Uh, any other questions? So I, I'm just adding to, to this is like if you want to come from, get out of the Canadian winter and you want to stay for four months, it's possible. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Yep, definitely. So yeah, actually I would say the majority of our clients, they buy these properties to not only rents but also enjoy it for themselves. So we've had all kinds of different days. Uh, they want to stay for four months, three months, or sometimes just two weeks in the year. Um, but yeah, definitely. How's the structure, the pay structure for how you uh, charge your services? So our services are charged based on a monthly fee which ranges between eighty and hundred and twenty dollars. It depends on the size of the property. And uh, the reason why we do that is not only to cover the, uh, so we, that's, our, that's our fixed monthly fee, but then we also have a commission uh, structure. So there's that monthly fee that would cover, uh, let's say, the weekly inspections, all the bill management, all the, like I said, the paying off all the property taxes, everything across the board, uh, making it hands off for you. But uh, the, then there's the commission structure, which is based on finding rentals. So, Talking about the commission, it's not a fixed commission, it's actually changed whether or not you find your own booking. So a very, very big aspect here in Costa Rica, when you were renting your property and you want to get the most of it, um, actually Tammy, I know Tammy suggests this, this to her clients, but also we're very, very strong supporters of this, is to market your own property as well. So back to his, uh, Bob's presentation, that is also a very, very, very big aspect because with by marketing your own property and generating your own bookings as well, our commission goes down. So we ask for about half the commission we normally do always um, when you find your own bookings. And our commission would be based, would be only solely going towards our, our, our managers to go and manage the property just as normal. So our, our managers are all commission based. So that's why we still ask for commission regardless. But um, putting in an extra effort to find, for us finding bookings at all times requires that. Yeah. I have a question. Um, so, how are people like me? I just in the process of buying a condo here in Las Palmas. Um, I had a condo that we flipped a year and a half ago in Las Palmas. The difference of prices is that I paid for the first one compared to this one is about a hundred thousand dollars in yeah. the last two years. Okay. How are people like us now coming in and buying these condos that are a lot of people think are overinflated? I don't know if that's true. How are we going to compete with the people that bought their condo at eighty thousand? Yeah, well, I, from what I've seen, everybody is is totally right at uh, raising their prices. Um, I know that the ones who bought it before they don't really have as much of an incentive to. Um, but I think across the board, everybody is. But at the same time, with that being said. The ones who had gotten in at those lower prices, a lot of them are choosing to sell them. So what we're seeing is that we've got a flood of people who have bought in condos at higher prices, so the rents have all increased. So we've got, I know um, like this year we experienced in, uh, in a certain complex where some there were some people who were, who were renting very, it's maybe a complex of maybe 20 units, but there were some people who were used to coming every year and they were certain, used to a certain price. But, uh, now that it's all new new owners around them, they uh, and theirs is currently being sold. They they were a little worried and they were asking us about prices. And when we told them the prices, they they were they were a little bit caught off guard. But at the same time, it's just a story across the board. So what we're what we're kind of seeing is that those old the the, the condos that were bought at those prices they're slowly being phased out. So I see everything kind of just increasing together. I almost feel like you need to market to almost a different clientele at yeah. this point. Uh, because the people that I've seen in the property that we used to own, um, I don't know, they, they're like, there's no way we can afford this anymore. And that's, yeah. so I think it's a totally different market. Than the other yeah, it's, 
Yeah. Yes, to, to newer people coming in, I think that, uh, yeah, I think that's what we're seeing across the board. Yeah. 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 I just want to bring up as well that, you know, a lot of the clientele that are looking for the same rates that they had previous years are, uh, uh, as well, the snowbirds. You know, people that come for the entire winter and they're used to spending X number of dollars per month. Um, and, you know, if you want to create, if you want to get your greatest ROI, you're probably renting on short term vacation rentals and not, you know, the your entire peak season. Somebody would probably get upset with me for saying that. But, um, you know, so you may have to market to a different clientele for sure. Yeah. Um, another option too that we're saying could be beneficial just due to the seasonality, the, the, the strong difference between them, is um, there's a lot of digital nomads coming now, right? So with digital nomads, there are people who are making salaries from back home and they have higher spending power. So what you can do is a longer, you know, even you can even sacrifice even a little bit of the high season, but if they're paying at a very high amount throughout the entire year, so it's that's where you kind of get the same return actually. So this. Some of our best performing clients are doing that, are choosing, are opting to do that. And compared to some other countries, Costa Rica is definitely uh, way ahead of the game for uh, you know the, the prices that are that are currently on the market right now. Do we, yeah. I have clients come from you know Florida, Hawaii, up uh, various places, and yeah. know, Mexico as an example. And, you know they can expect to pay a lot more for yeah. the prices here. For sure, for sure. Yeah, I'm actually speaking to, people, speaking to people that are actually still choosing Costa Rica because places like Florida and Hawaii and stuff are just way too, way too expensive. Yeah, and then Mexico also comes. Uh, there's a lot of uh, you know, yeah, hard questions. Sorry, just quickly. Yeah. Um, so if you were to manage the bookings and everything, what is the percent? What is the commission? Do you want to say the number? Sure. Yeah, we have no. So uh, what we charge is twenty percent. Twenty percent. Yeah, if we find. So there is a use of about ten percent. You said. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Perfect. Perfect. That 20% is what the client received. Yes. A so long term or a short term? Yes. So that's that. That 20% is minus any cleaning fees, uh, any fees from from Airbnb or anything like that, or even taxes. So that's after sales taxes applied to the client. Um, but yeah. yeah, exactly. I just want to mention something else. Sorry, I'm interrupting again. Um, yeah. You know, bill management, and I think that's really key. Um, you know, I'm going to say probably 80% of my clients are investors, and the big thing is, and of course they don't live here in the country, and the, the, one of the biggest questions is, do I need to open a bank account to pay my own bills and to manage my money? And of course, if you have a property manager, they can do that for you. So it's, it's a one-stop shop, and, um, and you know, definitely makes a lot easier. Yeah, yeah, I would say it's basically the whole goal here is to make it as passive as possible, as possible right? And at the end of the day, you can be as hands off as you want. Um, like I said, you, you can you can go and try to. I mean, we've had clients that really they want to know about every single thing, right? So and we like to provide that service as well. But at the end of the day, we are very comfortable in saying that we can manage it top to bottom with hands off. So it's so it's as passive as possible. Well, thank you very much. Very so I do, I do believe in company management as well. It's very important. Um, as I'm sorry for your Lewis, Lewis was saying, it protects your investment as well. If you're in Canada, there's a leak. If you haven't seen rainy season here, there's a lot of water. <laughs> we got a lot of snow in Canada or the US. Uh, here they got tons of water. We had three and a half 